Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about dry fly, kind of taking some of the questions away. We're getting just so many questions at the shop, online, on the phone, about the hackle and the difference between certain types of hackle. So I'm going to kind of take, this is a really basic thing. This isn't going to be about, you know, completely grading them and all that sort of thing. It's just going to be about what they are. And so, like I said, this is going to be about dry fly hackle only. So what I have here is a hand hackle that's to confuse you. And this is for wet flies. And the, the point is, and this is one of the questions we get, just because it's a neck does not mean that it's necessarily a dry fly neck or a rooster neck. Hen hackle is generally is, is associated with wet flies and not. And so if you see this and it says hen on it or wet fly, it's obviously not going to be for your dry flies. So I, I just want to bring that up because if we get that question about necks, when they, people see neck, they're, they're just assuming that it's for dry flies. And so I'm going to go through and break these down uh, kind of how they get where they are and kind of the transition. And so I said that the, the hen neck is not for dry flies, but not all rooster necks are for dry flies either. The, one of the things that started this was somebody wrote in and asked me if I was using on my Americans for something I was tying. It was for one of the, the videos we did about flatliners, I think. And I was using a uh, American neck not a saddle, an American, I'm going to go over the set. This is a saddle over here. I'll get to that in a minute. But the American neck, oh, dropped a prop. The American neck is very webby and it's, it's, it's still shiny. Like all rooster necks will be shiny, right? The hen necks will all be dull. And so these are, they're still shiny, but you'll see the feathers are webby and they're not like dry flies. So they're, it's still a rooster neck, but it has a specific purpose and the birds are different. And that's, that's the big thing is that these birds have been genetically modified for decades and decades to make them a certain kind of feather. And, and these likewise are raised for a specific use. So beside me, I've got the other, beside that one I mean, I've got the Coq de Leon, which is again, just the most incredible neck. I mean, the most beautiful things you've ever seen. And they've got this unique little barring in them, but not really a dry fly neck. I use this for more tailing. I use it on my wet flies. I use it in a lot of my streamers. Uh, I really like to substitute this in for like uh, in my steelhead flies for hair and stuff. And so it's not dry fly though. It's not, it doesn't have the barbular count, which I'll get to in a second, but they're still a rooster, but they are not dry fly or specific. It doesn't mean you couldn't use one, but just as a generality, that's not its purpose. So those are aside, more, more streamer-ish and, and tailing and different things like that. So then we're gonna go back in time a little bit. So before uh, the whole Whiting, uh, Tom Whiting, Dr. Whiting started doing this and, and Bucky Metz and some of the other people that were doing that at the time back in the 70s, and genetically modifying these birds and, and altering the birds to make them specifically, these are, these, these are feathers specifically raised for fly time. And so, but before that, we didn't have that luxury. We had, we had roosters that, you know, people raised them all over the country for fly time, but they hadn't got to the super zone they are now. So where we started with was, uh, you had either the, the farm raised, you know, rooster, and then you had what were called Indian necks. And these were just, just what, they're, what they're called. They were coming out of India, China, different places. And they weren't specifically designed for fly tying. They were designed, they're byproduct. You know, maybe they're eating them, maybe they're doing whatever. And then they found that you could sell these things. And so, and in my opinion, and this is what I grew up tying with. I, I mean, I started with these necks. Uh, I think some of them today are better than they were back then. I'm, I'm sure of it. They're for sure cleaner and they're for sure uh, more variety, at least from when I, when I grew up where I could get them. And I was, Jeremy and I were looking at these the other day, or yesterday, just how, how truly clean and, and shiny they are, both sides, you know, so the back's clean. And that's a big thing when your necks. If you've got a neck, especially if, you've, you know, if you're somebody that's taking and doing them yourself, make sure you get this cleaned off really well. You don't want to see, you don't want to see greasing on your necks, because if you do, it'll draw bugs and that's not good. But back to the feathers. So what you'll see in the Indian necks 
especially as of late, there's a lot of colors and they're really nice. You can buy a lot of them, but you don't get the real quality of feather in the long, long feather, right? And so what you'll see, like right in the middle of this thing, the feather's not very long and it's not very usable all the way through. Doesn't mean it's not working well. It just means you don't have quite the number of barbulars. That's the little, you've got the stem and then you've got the things that stick out the side, that, the, which is the feather, your barbular. You don't have as many of those per inch as you do on these quality necks, right? So these things here, even though you can get them in any color, anything, we're gonna go over the color thing in a minute, you can get these things. These are really great for kids to start with, or if you're tying some of the traditional patterns like the, uh, the Catskill style flies, some of those are pretty cool. You can use with these, you get the nice long fiber, or, uh, barbulars. And so they're pretty cool, you get nice colors. But overall, as a value, they're about 10 to 12 bucks usually. You're still ahead to buy a quality neck in the lower grade because it's gonna cost you four times as much, but you're gonna get probably 20 times as much usable feather. But it is a good way to start kids or whoever starting to see if they like it. Set that aside for a second. Come back to that barbular count uh, when we get into these. So basically when you grade these, and I've got, I've got most of the whiting stuff here. Uh, I just started with gingers uh, on these grizzly gingers. Uh, what we're gonna go through is how you actually, how they actually get to be the grade because they use what they call the Olympic system. So they've got uh, a bronze, silver, gold, and then a platinum on top of that. And they've got different ones, high and dry and tires grades. And I'm gonna just kinda go through, I'm not gonna pick every one of them up to show you, I'm just gonna tell you how they get to that point. And it's quite simple, really. And I'll use this in a second. Where's my little pin? I'm going to pick one of these up and just show you as I go. I'm going to take this bronze style one and just show you it when we get to it. But we're going to go through the grading process because this one's pretty, pretty, uh, probably the number one question I get in the shop is, is how, do, how do they come up with this? Why is one $85? Why is one $40? And it's a, it's a very simple thing. And, and if you've never done this, if you're, if you're a tire and you're a feather geek and you've never done it, you really need to go to Whiting's website and just go through their FAQs and just their different things about the, how they, they've got some incredible photographs. They can take you through all the colors and all the grading and how they get there 10 times more in depth than I'm going to. So the basics of this is how it happens is it starts, I'm going to take this, this just this bronze neck is how we're going to do it. And uh, what it is, is it's basically you've got what's called the sweet spot. And I'm just going to walk you through this neck really quickly. So this is the neck. This would be the shoulders, right? From here up, if you see this little wedge, that's where the feathers come up to the side of the head. So it goes here, goes down around the back of the neck, drops in here, and this is where it's going to lay back on top of the, of the shoulders of the bird, right? This is the pretty part. This is the part of the bird that's... They just, just, they see it, they kind of puff it up. It's really a statement for the bird. And so this is not really necessarily part of the count. From here to here is your count. So how this is graded, how they come up with this, and it's much more in depth than I'm gonna go into. You can read about it if you go on their site. But basically it's quality, count, and color. And so what you end up with is the first thing they're gonna look at is this thing right here from this point from right there to right there. Well, maybe not quite that. From here to about right there. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at it as an overall view. Just, just look at it and say, man, everything on there is really, really, really good, right? So you've got a really good quality of feather, meaning the stems look good, the overall color of every feather is pretty uniform. And then they're gonna look at that, and they're gonna say, you know, that's, that's great, then they're gonna go, what's the count? So then they're gonna look at the count of that. Is there, is there so I'm gonna pick this one up right here. This is a, a tires grade. It's got a few less, it's got a few less feathers it's got, than it does on this one, and the quality's not this, quite the same, and the color's not so uniform. So you look at this one, so I'm gonna put them right beside themselves again. So you've got, your first thing we're gonna look at is quality. So when they look at their quality is that they're not all the same. You look at this one, there's a few darker ones, a few darker ones over here. Maybe then they look at it and the count's not quite as good. 
And so that's going to take this one to the tire. This is a bronze. It's got a few imperfections. You can see those, you know, the feathers right here at the bottom aren't quite as good. Over here you got one that almost looks like a badger. We'll go through that in a second about the colors. But it's basically just the quality of the overall feather, the length. So how, the longer the feather, the more flies you get out of it. You're going to get, I, there, it tells you on their site actually how many you're going to get. I don't remember what the necks are. I'm sure it's in the close to a thousand per neck. On their saddles, they've got, uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but it's 900 to 2,800 flies per saddle. So they've, they've broke it down. But back to the quality, we're looking at the quality, we're looking at the color, and we're looking at the count. So we look at this one here, this is a bronze, and you got a few imperfections. This one we go over here, it's a silver, and it's got, and to me, you know, this one wouldn't really cut it other than the fact that the quality, because there's a few imperfections on the color, right? Especially that feather right there. I'm looking, trying to get that one to stick up. It's got a brown butt, which is just totally just brown, and then it goes into the bar ginger. But the quality of these feathers is incredible. And then the count has just gone up again, too. You can see it's got fatter already. And so the way this, and you don't really count these because, right up in here because they're the neck. So you get from here down, the usable number, the quality of this feather is absurd. It is absolutely, everyone is perfect, okay? And so then you could go to the next step up, which I don't really use gold. I don't have them in here. If I have 100 necks on the wall uh, or 200 necks on the wall at a time, I might have 10 golds because personally, uh, I just don't have the people, I don't see people wanting them as much as they used to. Uh, for me, when I'm looking for a gold or a platinum, it's going to be in some really uh, unique color. It's going to be like if I, I, I mean, I covet Cree necks. I, I, I don't tie with them that much. I probably got six of them. I absolutely covet the things. They're just gorgeous. If I get a platinum Cree or if I can get a certain champagne color done, some one of the freak colors that's what I look for on the high quality but even with those the it's an absurd amount of, of feather I would never ever use it all and so that's pretty much what you know we limit it we have so few people that want gold and actually it, you know how we do it here you can see we've got them numbered and this is important I'll get to this in a second but for back to what I was saying the the tires grade or the pro grade and the bronzes and the silvers Every one of them is going to have a good number. I mean, feathers, I, I told Jeremy earlier today, until 15 years ago, I had never tied, and I had all of the highest end there was. I had never had a neck this good. This is a pro grade. This is like a tires grade. This is the low end. I had never seen a neck this good 10 years ago. So it just tells you how good things have gotten. So, you know, for the really advanced tire or someone who's just, just just searching shades and just hues that's where i see the really high end stuff come into a play but as an overall just as a general tire i don't think i don't think you ever have to get above these this this bronze and, and pro grade and so basically you know you and then you got to look at them and that's what i was getting to any more you know here what we do it there's several people that do it where we actually number the neck and so you can see it because I'm going to go into this color thing for you for a second. But there's, there's, it's just so in depth color is. I've got three gingers here. All right. I've got a dark bar ginger. I've got a medium and a light bar ginger. And you can see there's just a subtle difference in these necks, right? And God help you when you get into the done colors because there are so many color variations. When I started with done, there's essentially done. And then you had a light done, done, and dark done. At this point, I don't have any idea how many shades of done there are. I, I, was, I was reading it the other day. I was just flabbergasted. I think there must be a dozen to 20 different shades of done. And so the only way you can do that, and the only way you can do that with consistency is to actually touch your or see the neck you want. And, and that goes back to another thing about these, about necks when you're buying them online. If you, and a lot of people, I, I, I can't tell you how many people buy online nowadays and because there's just not that many shops left. 
And so what we've done is we numbered them. And so you can actually see the neck and you can see the actual neck you're buying. And that's the only way you're going to get the color you want. If you can't walk into a shop and touch the neck and see it, you're going to have to trust that this is the one you're going to get <clears throat> because their shades are continuously changing and there's no such thing. This is a natural product. I don't care how many times you buy this thing. A dark ginger may not be the same dark ginger that you wanted that you had last time. So you really got to touch them. So that's back to the color and, and count. But that's just one way to help you out when you can see it. And so you've gone from quality, count and color. And then you've got the different grades. And for example, this is this is one more thing I want to touch on. This is a high and dry. This is a slightly higher grade. This is still a whiting product, but this is a, a high and dry, you know, uh, as far as as opposed to the dry fly hackle the high and dry has a, a really high quality and high count on the neck or excuse me count but doesn't have quite the quality in the feather that you're going to get on one of the whiting uh, dry fly hackles again until 10 or 15 years ago i had never seen a neck this good in my life and i'm by i mean that's just how far things have come the genetic engineering with these necks has done multiple, I would say the thing it's furthest on is the color because it's a natural product. It's a, it's a bird, right? And it's the color, it's really hard to get everything consistent because they're a natural product. But to get the type of feather is not as hard because they've got the way they keep them a certain temperature and humidify and all the things they do to make them have the long feathers, you, you get really quality. But a lot of people say, well, I don't want this, you know, I want a higher grade than this. Uh, this is a this is a value packed neck for sure. It's a little bit more than the pro grades, but you know you get you get a, a higher uh, diversity of feather. You get a few more big feathers up towards the end here on these than you do on some of these, and that's something else that's kind of come with this with the whole uh, genetic engineering. It's getting really hard to find really long hackles. So if you're looking for size 10 hackle. You've got, even when you, used to be you'd go to the, the, the lower grades and you'd get it, not anymore. These birds are getting so good, it's hard to get a size 12 or 10 hackle in one of these. So, you've got your quality, your count, and your color, and then your grade. That's how it goes through grading. And then you've got to look for the color you want. And, and I, 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 I was thinking about trying to talk about colors. I'm not going to. I'll give you two kind of quick things about it. You've got, you've got grizzly on color, which means it's barred. And then they dye a lot of these, so you can get any color, not any, but you can get an awful lot of colors in uh, grizzly dyed uh, whatever. I'll, I use a ton of grizzly dyed olive. I use it on a lot of my betas. And then uh, I'll grab one of these. And this is a barred ginger. So, what, so when you start, this is an Indian neck. So these are barred ginger. So in other words, they're like a grizzly because they have the bars in them, but they're colors. A true grizzly is only black and white unless it's, unless it's dyed. Then you go into the barred colors of other, other colors, like a barred ginger. One of the other things you'll see is called badger. And that's, and this is, it's, badger's not a color. It's when they get the stripe up the middle of the feather there, that dark stripe. So you got a badger, then you a barred, and then you got your grizzlies. And then the question that we get more than probably any of the others about the dry fly is why do I use a why would you use a saddle versus a neck and what's the difference? And then the difference is really simple. It's like I tell Johnny, pull your neck out of your saddle. So the difference is this is the neck. This is up here, right? It's wrapped around his head. This is its hind end. This is wrapped around its butt. So if this thing had a tail, it would be sticking out here and all these feathers would hang down the side. This is, it's a saddle. It's just like you put a saddle on a horse. It's hanging back here. It's his hind end and all these feathers hang down around his hips and the tail feather goes out the middle of it. All right. And this is where the true, this is when you start seeing genetic engineering, when they started modifying these birds to make them do something specifically. First thing they do, they built the legs taller. So they just kept, they just, how they do that, I have no idea. But they just kept breeding birds to get taller and taller and taller legs. Because if you're like this, right, if that thing, if this was a, a normal sized bird, all that would be hanging on the ground. 
And so these are try, they try to get these birds so their hind ends are up in the air and they don't drag and wear off the tips of these feathers. And so basically there's a lot of uniformity to the, to the saddles. They're all the same length. And when you get up in here, so you got a, you got your neck, which is up at the top. This is the hind end. These feathers are to display. These are too, but they hang off the hind end of the bird. And so the neck's never going to drag, right? But these are. And that's when you started seeing the modifications on the tall birds. So these things hang down, don't drag and get the tips all wore off. What this does for the tire, unlike with the neck, is it makes these feathers very uniform. And this is where you start seeing your grading. So your, Jeremy pointed something out to me, I'm going to get to this in a second, about these 100 packs. It's where you see the grading. Uh, we just looked it up. On a, a bronze saddle renders 900 flies per saddle. A platinum renders 2,800 flies. I'll be long dead before I tie 2,800 flies. But a lot of people do. So anyway, what you're going to get here is what you're going to see is these feathers, even these shortest ones up here, right? That's, and, and I'll get to these in a second on the 100 packs, but there's so many of them. This is going to render, one of these for me, because I don't, I don't do a lot of hackle on mine, that's a size 20, right? Maybe, maybe 18, 20 or 18. And so that feather right there for me would probably turn me anywhere from eight to 12 flies, maybe more, per feather on one, on one saddle. The difference in this and the neck is, even when I keep going down here, I barely get to a, it's, you usually don't get three, a lot of three sizes. So I'm gonna get a ton of 18s and a ton of 16s, but probably not too many 14s, a few of them down here, but not too many. But look at the density of this. You know, it's like a horse tail. That is an enormous amount of feather. So, and, and how they, and there were so many. That I remember the first time I saw these things, Tom Whiting came in my store when I was in Michigan. He had a Tupperware thing full of these, these saddles. I had never seen a saddle in my life that was longer than that. And he had these things like this long and he was just jacked about how cool they were. I said, oh my God, I've never seen so many feathers in my life. And, and I mean, it was, and, he, and I, I just thought to myself, Wow, it'd be like a one-time shot. You'd buy one of these the rest of your life. But what you don't get is the diversity of size. So when you buy a neck, and that's the question that I was getting to that I get asked so much, why do you buy a saddle as opposed to a neck? And so with the saddle, if you know you're gonna tie 18s and 20s or 18s and 16s or whatever it is, right? You go into these. And if you know you're gonna just, like your commercial tire, you, know, you already know that. If you're tying a lot of one fly, saddles become really economical. I mean, they're almost, it's, it's really quite cheap when you figure that that's probably a thousand flies. But if you're gonna tie, if you're the type of person that does, I do a couple 18s, I do a bunch of 16s, every once in a while I do a 12, you know, 14, I like to do this or that, then the neck becomes much more practical for you because you'll have all that, all the different range of sizes in the neck. Whereas with the saddles, you tend to be a little bit more two size. For me, it always ends up being about two sizes that, they get out, the, that I get out of one. And so to, because there were so many in these, and it was hard in the beginning to sell these, and you've always got trimmings and stuff like that, Whiting came out with this thing called the 100 pack. And these things are incredible. And, and Jeremy pointed out to me earlier that every one of these is graded off of a gold saddle, which a gold saddle is, that's the one where you start throwing into the 2,500 feathers per, and the quality and the count, and everything, all the things we talked about, the quality of the feather, the stem, the stiffness, everything that goes into it is on a gold. And so when you buy a 100 pack, you're getting the equivalent, this one was for a size 14, this is a grizzly size 14, you're gonna get a hundred size 14s out of one pack like this. So these things are really, they're, they're spot on, they're targeted. You know you're gonna tie that fly. These are incredible values because you're, you, you're not gonna have any waste, right? So that's about all there is to it. Remember, you've got quality, count, color. You've gotta go through, decide what you're gonna tie, whether the saddle's gonna be better for you or worse, or not worse, but you know more practical to have a neck. 
You're going to have different colors that you have to actually see. You can, you can look those up. You can have different quality of, or, or I don't know if you call it quality, different grades of the neck. And they basically go in 20, $25 increments. You can go, you know, 45, 65, 85, 130, uh, you know, in that they just kind of go, they, they come in whatever company you're dealing with. And so, and they've got fillers in between the hundred packs and the tailing and all that stuff. It's, it's not as complicated as it sounds. It, it's truly, if you go out and you read just a little bit, go to a shop, you know, like I said, we do ours. We put them up every time we get a shipment of in, we they write their number on so that you can actually see them. There's several shops that do that. It's a great, you know, because so many people go online, it's a great uh, opportunity to see what you're going to buy and not just have somebody pick one off the shelf. But there's a lot to it. Uh, I hope you figured, I just remember one thing, I saw it on the table. When I was talking barbular count, we have another video that talks about this. It's just about barbs and the barbulars are these things on the outside. And this was a, this was a, I doubt you can see it very well, but it shows different lengths and the different densities of that, that barbular count. But that's another video. I don't know what it's called. It's grading hackle or something like that. You can find it on our website, but it'll help, you know, demystify this thing just a little bit. So lots to look at. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you out.